So welcome in everyone to our mindful lunch session. Uh, for those of you who might be a bit unfamiliar with Reu, uh, just a quick synopsis about what we do. So Reu is a private company. We deliver capacity building workshops and innovative tools that help groups and individuals improve their mental well-being, transform personal conflicts, and grow their resilience. And we do this through workshops, journaling sessions, storytelling, and so forth. And you can learn more about uh, Ryu on our website. Um, SJ is going to post a link in the chat for you. That's, um, so that's available to you. Um, we have a pretty awesome, safe, brave, and supportive online community that's dedicated to working supportively with parents, caregivers, and professionals to help them improve their mental and uh, their mental wellness and well-being through the use of storytelling, journaling, and mindfulness-based stress reduction practices. And the link to that community page is there uh, available as well. Um, if you'd like to join our community for free or subscribe to one of our programs, and you'll find that link in the chat there as well. So thank you so much for joining us for today's session. Um, as you know, Mindful Lunch, uh, for those of you who are familiar with Mindful Lunch, is a free speaker series, um, online speaker series that we kind of try to use to offer a little bit of bite-sized learning that helps us improve our mental wellness, well-being and resilience. And the whole idea behind Mindful Lunch is that guests get to join us on live, live online, on live. That's a new word. Wonderful. Get to join us live online to share their wisdom through conversations, question and answers, and beneficial self-help tools. And this month, my Mindful Lunch guest is Chrissy Cordingly. Chrissy is a blogger. She's a TV show and podcast host and a professional leadership coach. And she's just an all round awesome person. Like you really do need to have a, you just need to listen to her and you'll fall in love with her. I guarantee it, guarantee it. So Chrissy's joining me today to discuss the different types of burnout and the ways we can recover from and prevent it, right? Now, I feel that burnout is sort of this silent shame that many of us suffer on our own and we really rarely get a chance to talk openly about it. So this conversation is about trying to take a little bit of the sting and stigma out of burnout. And the best way I think that we can do that is to really understand what burnout is and recognize and acknowledge that it shows up in everyone's life um, in some way. And that there are things that we can do to uh, help ourselves to deal with it, to recover from it, and to even prevent it. So before I turn things over to Chrissy, I just wanted to just take a couple seconds to point out that when we're talking about burnout in this context, we're not talking about a mental illness or a disease or a sickness. In fact, Burnout doesn't require any kind of diagnosis by a mental health professional um, in order for you to be able to name your experience as burnout, right? In fact, um, burnout is really more of a syndrome, right? And a syndrome is a set of symptoms or conditions that kind of occur together. So in medical terms, syndromes often suggest the presence of something, um, a specific illness or a disease or a greater chance of developing a particular illness and disease. 
So in the, in the case of burnout syndrome, what we are experiencing are conditions of exhaustion, exhaustion, sorry, uh, aligners make it difficult to pronounce that word, exhaustion, um, mental distancing, right? Negativism and a lack of personal efficacy, right? So those are the primary symptoms. And what happens with burnout is that those symptoms tend to build on each other. Right. And over time, we get to that point where, you know, through this this continuous feeling of feeling uh, like we're not being effective in the things that we're trying to achieve and feeling unsupported and feeling unaligned and feeling just exhausted, they build on each other. And all of those things put us on a path to a greater chance of developing other conditions like chronic stress. Uh, mental health disorders like anxiety and depression or even physical diseases like an eating disorder or heart disease and things like that. So, you know, I just want to bring it back to, to that understanding that this is generally something that a lot of people experience, especially women, right? Especially women with health condition, especially women who are in separated relationships or families, especially women who are professionals and have all of those things that are going on, dealing with a chronic health condition, dealing with um, family issues, dealing with separation, moving, you know, changing jobs and all of these things. So it's important to kind of note that even though the um, uh, World Health Organization and bodies like that tend to refer to burnout as an occupational phenomenon, right? This, this thing that, you know, you expect to see only in the workplace. Um, it's really important to recognize that burnout happens outside of work, right? Um, we can become burnt out uh, due to our relationship. We can become burnt out because of our health issues. We can become burnt out in caring for loved ones. We can become burnt out as a result of a lot of unpaid work that we're doing. So when you're tuning in, so the invitation right now is just to tune into this, to this topic, this conversation, and just to think about some of the different ways that you may have experienced burnout, burnout or that you've seen burn, burnout happening in, um, in the lives of people that you care about or the people that you work with. And, um, you know, hopefully you'll leave the session today with an understanding that you can be proactive in recognizing and preventing burnout for yourself and your loved ones and the people that you work with, All right? So that's my spiel. Um, that's <laughs> my spiel. spiel. That my, that's my spiel, which I cannot pronounce properly because I've got these clear aligners in. Um, <laughs> so the tongue doesn't hit the teeth the way that it needs to, but it's just going to make it more fun. At least I'm not biting my tongue anymore. So that's good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Chrissy, I'm 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 gonna I'm gonna pull you in in pull you in now and give you yeah. the mic. Um because um like when we spoke in our prep sessions, I mentioned that you know I was really, really keen on getting you um getting you to have this live talk with me so we could talk openly openly about what leveling up from burnout really looks like. And one of the reasons for that is because you've been such a great mentor and teacher for me around in, in this regard. Um you've experienced a number of the different things that I've been talking about is the different forms of burnout, yet you are still here. You are still kicking. <laughs> you are still thriving. You're still, still laughing. punching back. <laughs> and so, you know, I wanted to sort of like create the space where we could sort of get a sense of what it feels like to have, de have dealt with burnout in the job, the relationship, the caregiving and the health aspects of things. So, you know, you know, and it's up to you. How much do you feel comfortable in sharing with our audience about your own experiences and challenges with burnout? I am super comfortable. So I'll, I'll share a couple stories, but I want to just talk about something that you said there that I think is really important when we talk about burnout, that we all understand. How many of you, you just put your hands up or use reactions, identify with the term hyperachiever? Anybody? Yeah. Perfectionism. What about people pleasing? Oh yeah. We're all in good company. I love it. Like, like <laughs> birds of a feather. Perfect. Awesome. 
Because you mentioned the shame and failure that comes with burnout. And I think that's really important to know because that actually is a sign. You know, how many of you have been in a situation where you just keep pushing and pushing and you feel like you're going uphill and you're so confused and you're going, what am I missing? How many of you have asked that question to yourself? What am I missing? I don't understand. Mm -hmm. What you're missing is you. You have taken yourself out of the equation. And I have done that myself where I've like, oh, what I want actually matters. How I feel actually matters in this situation. Why am I putting that as the last thing that as long as I get over this hill, that's what matters, not my well-being or wholeness after I achieve this thing. Like the cost is you. And that's really, really, really important for people to understand. It's not about overcoming all the things. <laughs> it's not about dying on every hill that we we really set our hearts and minds to it's about really understanding who we are and what we need and then being okay with who we are so this burnout journey for me has happened several times it's sort of been a, a cycle over the last decade starting with um a divorce then a chronic illness that came up with an autoimmune disease then career explosion then I almost lost my life to a brain injury. There's a whole bunch of stuff. So we'll, we'll go to the beginning. But what I learned in that time was once I started putting myself in the equation, I was, it became much clearer as to what I was missing and what I was meant to be in and what I should be expending in energy. So my experience, the first time I really can think about burnout as something that I know exactly when I hit the wall, I know exactly what happened. And this was in a relationship context, in a marriage with a lot of subvert narcissism, gaslighting, emotional ma manipulation, a lot of lack of mutual accountability. And as a people pleaser and achiever, I'm like, no, like, I will pretzel myself into anything it takes to make this person love me and for me to show that I'm a great wife and I deserve to be loved and there was a day where I remember we were actually on a trip and we were supposed to do some sightseeing and I couldn't like I was literally like a cement block I hit this wall my whole body hurt when I got home I was so scared I told my doctor I feel like I had a full body migraine like everything hurt hair skin and I could not move if I wanted to. And I just remember that moment just feeling like I cannot go any further. I cannot. And that's when decisions started to make and I had to put myself in the equation. The next time was when I was in a career. So now I'm sort of settled. I found a, a, a career that I really enjoyed with a company. Um, but same thing around the pandemic, things started shifting and changing. And there was a lot of ideals and philosophies around how we should do business going forward and how we should treat people going forward. And we, I had a business owner that really liked to bring politics into the workplace. And that was became a bit of an ethical issue being a health and safety professional at that time. It's hard to protect the people you're there to protect if we're in denial about the risks that are out there, if that makes sense. I'm not going to get too deep into that. But so this whole like, oh my God, oh my God, I need to fit in. I need to find a way to make this work because this is my place. This is where I belong. And now I didn't belong anymore. So again, that pretzel to be like, oh, they don't need to change. I need to change. Again, who did I forget in that equation? So instead of getting curious and going, what do I really need? Or what really makes me happy? I <laughs> pushed and pushed and pushed until I actually had a nervous breakdown. And I woke up one day and my boss called sick in the morning and I burst into tears and I didn't stop crying for two weeks. Two weeks. Put me on leave, paid me in full, was very concerned. But after that, things just weren't the same. He was worried about putting things on my plate that he was putting. Pre so it just became like also going, but I want to feel capable, right? Then from that... I ended up finding another position with a different company that ended up being abusive. It wasn't something I'd ever really experienced in the corporate world before. Um, and so I worked for this woman and I should have known better because when she interviewed me and I accepted the job, she said, are you sure? I'm kind of a bitch. Oh, and I went, oh, 
No, you're not. Oh, yeah, she was. And, <laughs> <laughs> and I... <laughs> And it was a lot of, again, like there was this micromanaging, this scrutiny, this very like, say that on, on the company message, don't say it like that, don't say this, you missed a period in that sentence, like it was very, very like, it was, it was extreme, extreme. And so again, that like, ugh, ugh, trying to like, not being able to come to a meeting, knowing what I needed to say or what I needed from somebody, I was more worried about positioning myself so that I wouldn't get attacked. Or that she would be like, yeah, you know what, Chrissy, you are smart. And I'm so happy you're here because I still wanted that approval. And it came down to a performance review. And I love this because this was only six months later. And I'm like, you know what? I don't think I need to be places where I don't fit in anymore. I'm going to put myself first. And I said to her, this is what I need. She said, well, that's crap. That's unreasonable. And really all I asked for was uh, respectful communication. She's like, that doesn't help me. What does that mean even? I'm like, that you don't even know what that means? That's a problem. And I deserve that because <laughs> I give it to you. Even when you're mean to me and yelling and screaming and telling me I'm a waste of money, you're, I'm still being respectful to you. So I made the decision to leave and I spent a lot of time learning about quitting because there's that failure piece, right? Oh, I quit, I quit, I quit, I quit. And I was a mess. I mean, I knew Pat Lee at this time. I was a mess because I was a single mom this was my job. I didn't have any other options at the time. It was, I had just recovered from the last burnout. <laughs> now I'm burnout again. And I didn't really know what to do. And from there, trying to figure out who I was and in the state of anxiety and like, where do I fit in? Where do I belong? All these questioning. I ended up getting sick with COVID and I think because my whole body was in such a state of stress that my, and having an autoimmune to begin with, what it led to was a, a brain injury called serotonin syndrome. And I almost died. And I was basically paralyzed for three weeks. So I, I just tremored and I couldn't sleep and it, paramedics came. It was a big thing. And it took six months of recovery still not having a job, still a single mom. So that's, that's the dark news, right? Like that's, <laughs> so Pat Lee says, you're still here. Yes. Thank God. <laughs> Thank God I'm still here. But what I learned about burnout was just what I said at the beginning. It's, it often comes with the amount of time we put trying to fit ourselves into someone else's idea of who we are. And it doesn't mean, of course, we lose our manners or we lose caring about other people's, you know, caring about other people's feelings. It just means that knowing that we're not there with any intention to hurt or harm, but we also have the right to take up space. And if I have to mask or change who I am, like if I came to this and Pat Lee's like, no jokes today, Chrissy, do not make <laughs> me laugh. I'd be like, yeah, I can't do that. Sorry, I'm out. Yeah, no. <laughs> And I've even packing my bags and going out the door too. Even, <laughs> even today, because Pat Lee's very like planned, and I love it. She gives, she inspires me a lot with the planning and the organization. So I joked with her at the beginning, and well, it was kind of a joke, but it was true. I'm like, she's like, I'm really looking forward to this. I'm like, me too. I wonder what I'm going to say today. I'm so excited <laughs> to hear what I'm going to have to say. <laughs> and what I love about that now is that I have been able to heal myself to a place where I am okay with being that way because that is actually who I am and sometimes the spontaneous stuff is better than so that's my experience with burnout if that makes sense mm. thank you so much for sharing that Chrissy like thank I think you. I'm seeing a few nodding faces and stuff I think <laughs> I think I think I think all of what you said like I know for me like there are parts of that that I can relate to like my experience has not nearly been as terrible as yours, um, or as as tumultuous over uh, such a such a short period of time, but I think there's a little bit, there's a little bit of 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 similarity that we can all sort of identify with as women, as professionals, as people with children or families, as persons with spouses that you know, kind of creates that little bit of a, a room for empathy for what's going on. And you went through a lot, like you dealt with a lot. And I'm wondering, Chrissy, like, 
how did you come through it? Like, how did you cope? How did you find yourself moving through all of those things um, in a way that would have brought you to where you are now? Yeah, I, <laughs> one thing I learned, and I don't know, so, you know, I, some of my therapists in past have said, you know, it's really great. You're self-aware, but it's also a bit of a curse. And do any of you relate to that too? Like, I think that's where some of the shame comes too. Cause we're like, I shouldn't be feeling this way. I, I know better. Like, why can't I handle this? But it's like, but those feelings are valid. We're still human beings and those emotions allow us to be curious. So what I did instead of trying to stuff them down or tell myself was I actually allowed myself to feel things and not just like cry and feel in my head but like oh yeah I have a body like there's a whole me taking up space here I've been physically ill as well what is my body trying to say so it was sort of like there was time with myself and getting curious with myself like I was a friend to myself like I was sitting with myself going okay Chrissy it's a tough, tough day. What do we need to know about ourselves today? What are you trying to tell me about me today? And then getting curious. I just, I had heard somewhere that the opposite of fear and anxiety was curiosity. And I thought, okay, it's not about being brave. Cause what does brave mean? Does that mean I show up? Does that, what does it to me being brave is the ability to be open to possibilities, whether they're good, bad, it doesn't matter. It's all just information. So there was that inner curiosity. And then, so that was writing out, journaling, spending time writing, blogging, writing articles, not for any audience, but for myself. So often when you read my articles, the audience is me. I'm writing them for me. They're like letters from me to me about this is how this experience happened. This is how it shaped. So the writing was really good at the self-reflecting. And then the other part was the community. So allowing my feelings to matter by putting them out in the world and letting them fall where they needed to fall. And what's really interesting is once I started sharing some of the information, more people wanted to hear about it. So there was a podcast that I do that talks, it's the flare up show and it's about people that have risen out of resilience or are in the middle of their resilient story, learning to find themselves. So it was really the, embodiment personal embodiment getting to know all of me again and learning how to get comfortable with myself and often I would do that in nature so close to the earth on the ground even the other day I had a tough day there were some trauma triggers and uh my, my boyfriend was I'm in love now that's kind of exciting that's happened since I'm <laughs> with myself I'm in love oh it's amazing anyways um so I was laying on the ground with my cat and I was just like exhausted and, and you know what? He came over and he laid down beside me and he's like, okay, I'll be on the ground with you. But I'm like, this is, I like the ground because it reminds me I'm part of the earth, not an outsider. And also it's like, I can get up anytime I want to. There's this like reminder, like I can get up off this floor. I can get up again, but I get to choose where it goes. The other thing I would, I had to, I did a bit of research as well to look into deconstructing some myths so like when I left that job a lot of people around me like how you quit you don't quit and I'm like what is it with quitting so I did some research and I learned that the word quit actually comes from quies which is the word for have peace oh. quitting isn't about leaving or giving up quitting is about honoring yourself and going this is not for me Ooh. I'm choosing peace mm -hmm. and when I changed that and then I was like yeah that wasn't the place for me that I don't know where I'm meant to be yet but that is definitely not <laughs> mm -hmm. where I'm meant to be mm -hmm. so I again it's that curiosity like listening to what people are saying and and now being curious as to why do you think that tell me where did you start thinking that and then mm -hmm. asking myself those things too so and that's the best when you can do with other people that are also engaged in curiosity and and their own personal journeys. It's not about making my journey theirs or vice versa. It's just about what are you learning about you? Mm -hmm. How are you experiencing 
this human experience. So Mm -hmm. that community through the podcast, through connecting with Pat Lee and her community, just surrounding myself with people that I feel very safe with. Mm -hmm. And not only do they allow me to be me, but I also give them the courtesy to be themselves. Yeah. Community is everything because we don't feel alone. Even though our journeys are very individual, Mm -hmm. we don't have to suffer alone by any means. Absolutely. I And I feel they, I think this is why you and I are, we connected and we stayed connected uh, for a really, really long time. Um, just that similar belief in, in community. So Chrissy has a, um, uh, a podcast and a wonderful SJ's just gotten to share the podcast link um, there in the chat, if you're interested in checking it out. And she also has a Facebook group, um, mm-hmm. A uh, girl with a flare on Facebook. Yes. Um. Uh. That's a a a private Facebook group. Um. Uh. That's one of the communities that she's that she is talking about. And, um. It was from knowing you, Christy, that I kind of like kind of in the conversations we've had that I was able to sort of flesh out exactly what the Reu community would look mm-hmm. like and why do we want the community to be the way that it is because we wanted to have those moments of connecting with like like-minded people in the sense that we are all thinking we matter you know and we want the other person to remember that they matter and mm-hmm. by reminding the other persons that we're around that hey we can listen to each other we can we can hold space for each other. We can remind each other that we both matter. Then we actually become much stronger in the process. And there isn't anything that we're failing at. We're not failing. Um, like you, you, you said, it's all about being curious because it's not failure. As I always say to my girls, it's information. It's mm-hmm. information. It wasn't that, it, you know, we can say, okay, there's one way we can think about it. It was a terrible experience. Or we can say, well, this is just useful information. Yes. Um, and so I love that. I love that idea of being able to put that forward. Yeah. <laughs> Can I, I want to share one story. I hope you don't mind me sharing this story. Oh, no, go once. ahead. But even, even in us and our different experiences and different educations and all those things, like sometimes comparison can come into play. And that's also a sign of burnout, right? Is that again, because we're losing our own identity. But I remember getting to a place where I started to get really curious about that. And I shared with Pat Lee, we were working on a project. She sent this big long document that was brilliant and it had like footnotes and I'm like I don't want to write a footnote and I started crying going I can't be successful I don't want to write footnotes and then I called Pat Lee and I'm like can you hear this craziness like it wasn't even like I was judging myself or but for some reason I'm like can you believe that I my brain went so to like a footnote and it went like you can't be successful like it's just (laughs) like where does this voice come from so (laughs) but it but some of the that's what I mean like get curious get a little silly with yourself going come on Chrissy like is a footnote really going to hold you back from your career where you're meant to be you can learn things and even if there is something we don't know that we need to learn just know we have the power to learn those things we have the power to learn yeah absolutely and it's also about surrounding yourself with people who you know if it's even just one person that will be that same voice that will put yes. it back to you right because <laughs> I remember that story because after that every time I write a footnote I chuckle and I go I footnotes. <laughs> you know? you you're, brilliant. you're a doctor you're a doctor I know brilliant <laughs> it's just so it's it's just so amazing so at the end of the day it's the you know I'm hearing I'm hearing this question of coming back to what is it that I deserve how do I deserve to hold myself um and how how do I deserve to hold and love myself like that is like Mm -hmm. that critical thing that becomes the linchpin in in all of these things if I can see myself and as being important and big enough to value how I feel then my chances of feeling burnt out are gonna be potentially reduced because I am putting my needs at the forefront of the situation not necessarily an expectation (laughs) or I'm putting my intuition at the forefront of this conversation not an expectation that someone else has of me like I like that point that you made about um that employment with that boss that said are you sure you want the job I'm really kind of a bitch uh well 
you know, if we had applied curiosity there, it's like, really, what do you mean by that? You know, exactly. And then going a little bit further with that conversation, right? Um, but, you know, it's, 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 it's so important, I think, to talk about these things, because, you know, like I said, I, I mentioned that I feel like burnout is sort of the silent shame that we're all sort of living with and dealing with, and we feel it in our bodies, and we go, oh, you know, I can't talk about this. I want to quit. I want to stop. I want to backtrack. I said yes to this thing, but really, you know, I I'm looking at it now and I feel like I should have said no. And I love what you said. I, I'm really going to go, go see if I can dig into that some more, this idea of quitting, meaning finding peace. Because, you know, if we think about things from a conflict transformation perspective, that's all that our bodies and our intuitions are trying to pull us towards this mm -hmm. moment of peace and ease. Right. And so, again, if we put ourselves in the forefront, if we put our needs and what we really deserve and what our intuition, what our gut is really telling us, then more often than not, we choose that path of peace and ease as opposed yeah, yeah. to the path of 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 expectation and bending ourselves up into that pretzel to try to fit into that mold that someone else has created. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um. Did you did you have something to add there? Oh no, I'm just getting excited for the preventing part. Oh yeah, so so my my <laughs> question, so like, okay, take it away because that was going to be my my question. So what what do you have for us? What can you what can you share with us about how to be proactive with preventing burnout? How do yeah. we how do we how do we put ourselves in the mix in yeah. this in this in this in this the kind one, of situation? Yes, I think the one thing that's really important to remember is. There's a lot of small daily things we need to do that are good for us. Don't as underestimate the power of a good glass of water and a nap, like take care of yourself. So when I, <laughs> along, when my kids were little, I joined the um, cosmetic company, Mary Kay. I was a sales director for a number of years with them. And I remember sitting in a class and another director, she's a, she's a Cadillac director she said, she goes, you know, when I used to drive my old Ford Tempo, and that's how old I am, Tempos were around. Uh, <laughs> you know, I would feel every speed bump, every pothole, just like, ka-chunk, ka-chunk. Like, it was just this rusted old bucket, you know, that I didn't care about. But I felt every block, every pebble, every everything. She goes, and then I got in a Cadillac. Man, I don't feel a thing. I just soar over all the speed bumps. And I was like... Yeah, like if we treat ourselves well and treat our whole bodies and feed and water ourselves and surround ourselves with good things, it takes a lot larger of an obstacle to get us to the point of breakdown. So now it's not a footnote that's going to make me cry. It's going to be something fairly significant, right? So that is one. So don't underestimate the little things that you can do yourself daily. They do make a difference. They do make a difference. The other thing is make sure this goes back to the comparison piece and the make sure you're being authentically you as much as you possibly can is make sure you're running your own race so that we do have jobs where we have job targets and, and things like that. And I remember just, again, honoring my own neurodiversity. I... I didn't always feel this motivation through the similar goals that other people set, like make this amount of money, do this amount of sales calls, like you'll be successful when you have these diamonds or whatever else. I didn't really feel motivated by that. And I thought, okay, I still have to have some of those in my goals because that's what, you know, I do need to make money to feed my kids and all this stuff. But I want to create a bigger piece of the puzzle to what success looks like to me. Is it just the things or the achievements or is it who I am in the process? Like, can I make this a win-win situation where, yes, the byproduct is still this, but I have my own ladder of success. And I wrote this just after my divorce. So when I was really sick with my autoimmune, just out of a relationship, little kids, just a lot of stress, a lot of financial stress. And I created a ladder of success. So it was just, it's coffee stained. I can share it, but it's, <laughs> it's, it was, it's over 10 years old now, but I sat down and I thought, okay, I keep saying that success doesn't mean much to me, but what success would, what would being successful to me look like? What ladder can I climb? What's my own race to run? And so I wrote this ladder of success and the bottom rung was 
to aim for having a healthy body and mind. So water, uh, changing my nutrition, making sure that, um, I want to say too, with nutrition crowd, don't cut. So don't focus on what you have to take out, start adding good things to it. The other stuff will go away. You'll see it works well. Crowd it out. Don't cut it out. Cause cut it out is again, deprivation. It's not, not good. Um, <clears throat> Nutrition, positive reading, meditation, fostering confidence, self-belief, being around people that made me feel good and that I felt like I made them feel good too. The next one was having being clear and focused and persistent because again, I felt I was so broken. I didn't feel like I could, I felt like I would start and then stop, start, stop. So I was really feeding that shame cycle. So just to start being discerning was the goal for that, to just live life on purpose and to be accepting of what was happening. Then it was to be creative and curious. So now I'm healthy. I can be a little more discerning with my time. And now I want to be continuously learning and I want to make my life a little more fun. Then communicating and peer growth was the next run. And then the last run was influential, sharing with people, helping to heal the world, speaking and writing publicly and professionally. I pulled this out. I've forgotten about it. I pulled it out about a month ago and I just started bawling. So I'm like, I did it. I, I'm i successful. Yay, you're <laughs> successful. But, but guess what? Now there's a new, but now there's a new lab. Now you have to do a new there's, one. Yeah. So that's what I'm working on now because I'm in this corporate role with Ignite Purpose, which is doing great things, helping create environments where people don't need to go into burnout mode to be successful there. Like we're changing that from the executive level, which is really cool because it's really works with a personal coaching sign. But um, so now my new ladder, like I've, I've got the ladder and I'm thinking about what I want to put into it. So protective of what I allow in, because again, I'm sort of hearing, especially as you gain more visibility, you also gain a lot more of opinion and advice. So it's like, what do I actually want to allow? What are my qualifications for letting someone's opinion affect how I change or do my life. Uh, and then more nature and movement. Cause again, this was so timely when Pally asked me because I had stopped spending time outdoors, which is where I feel most grounded and happy. And so I, that'll probably be the bottom run where I am daily next to a tree at some point during the day. Right. Mm -hmm. So that is for me, a huge component of creating more success. Mm -hmm. So I would definitely, so again, don't underestimate the small things that you do every day. Maintain yourself like a high powered sports car, rest, fill your mind with good stuff, read, be graceful with yourself, get curious, and then make sure you have your goals, your ladder set, your compass set to what actually makes sense for you. And yeah, you may have growth and personal growth and challenges, of course, but that they're not the sign that burnout is on the way is when you stop enjoying the things that you've enjoyed. That's what, do any of you look at your Facebook memories every day? I go in and I'm like, Oh, I forgot how much I used to love that. Let's go find it. So that's, that's what I mean. It's those little glimmers and remembering little pieces of ourselves that maybe we, we dropped along the way, go mm -hmm. pick them up, go find them and go find the new ones. There's lots of cool things out there. Oh. I rambled there so I got real excited so no I that's that's okay I love yeah. that and I love that SJ has been SJ has been so great she's she's yeah, really yeah. on point with like just noting everything in the chat so 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 anyone who missed anything because I was trying to write them down and I was starting to fall behind so I love that um I love that and I love the way that you put it like the the the, the getting back to nature like for me I know that that's one thing that I've lost over the last couple of years that I am really curious and I love the way that you said it go stand next to a tree like uh <laughs> like it's so important that part of it you know in our community in the Ryu community we talk about um sometimes when we talk about dealing with um persistent stress or trauma we talk about filling up the buckets Yes. And nature is one of those really, really important buckets that need to be filled in order for us to really be able to uplift ourselves, even in the terrible moments. So I'm yes. going for a walk to just standing near a tree or for me, sometimes it's digging a hole. Like I love to dig holes and move plants around. It's just ridiculous. Um, really? But, you know, I, I'm just curious because I would love to hear from 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 Ooh. people in our audience, just like what they yes. think, like, you know. I, love, I really like this idea of, of creating a ladder, your own ladder of success 
um, that you mentioned, Christy, and I think it's just so awesome that um, I'm going to say it's because I asked why you went and, and and found that thing when you were looking around. Was it was it because you were invited to speak in Mindful Lunch? You went digging and found a... No, a no. <laughs> or was it just was just completely it was just uh, coincidental? Really, yeah, sometimes when I'm starting to feel, because I have ADHD and I can tend to be cluttered, Mm -hmm. and the clutter makes it worse so every once in a while I do like the purge and okay. this day it was a purge of papers that I had tucked away when I first when I, like that were just in a so I was cleaning out a really old file folder of old ideas and I started being oh this is cool this is, I remember this from Mary like, oh that's awesome you should yeah and it. then it was there and I was like I hope you don't get rid of it don't chuck it no, it's going to disintegrate at some point, but yeah, it's because it's like, I don't know if you guys can see, but it's like coffee stained. It's like, like, this is not fancy. Don't think like you got to go and get like construction paper and know how to scrapbook, like literally. And it's funny, my OCD friends, when I showed them, they're like, why is it crooked? I'm like, who cares? Like, <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, use a ruler I'm, for yours. That's, that's you. You, I will happily support your use of a ruler and making your ladder of success. Yeah. Well, I love that idea of the ladder of success. And I'm just curious if, you know, just to bring our, our audience into the conversation and you can unmute yourself or come on into the chat if you'd like. Yes. And and maybe just like, if you could think about creating your own ladder of success, like what, what would be on your first rung? Like what's one of the first things that you feel mm -hmm. you'd need to, to sort of put, put in there as being really, really important for you to be able yeah. to build on? as per that creating of your own your own success measures mm -hmm. you're all scared no oh, i don't bite <laughs> i would love to hear or even questions if you have questions or even if you've got any other questions for for chrissy that would be great as well i yeah, guess christine come on I, I guess I guess um, at first I was going to say the nature part because that's really important to me and being outside and, but I think writing, yeah. like I think if I, if I don't, I think that that's become sort of essential in my life, like storytelling and writing. Like it's yes. just, it's just something I really need and I, I'm missing it right now, but I mean, it doesn't have to be actual writing. It can even be just the thinking that goes into what eventually will be the writing. Yeah. But I have to have that in my life. If it's not in my life, then I feel like I'm drifting. <laughs> so, uh, but the nature definitely has to. So maybe first and second rung, like, or. Yeah. They, yeah. yeah. Those, like I, I, oh my God, I was just out. I was just on a holiday where we were out in nature. And um, I always have this sort of weird, like simmering anxiety. But for a whole week, it was gone. And we were outside every single day and just kind of just and just seeing beautiful nature, trees and birds. And and my God, it was and sunshine. And it was wow. Like I can't believe now. And then I came back and right away that simmering anxiety came back. Mm. It was really, yeah, yeah. So. It's the environment, right? How do you create your environment? And it sounds like. <laughs> When I do, in some of my coaching programs, we talk a lot about creativity as one of the pillars. I call it non-food nourishment. And everybody can okay. do it, but it is important. And if that's important to you, definitely carve out time for it, whatever it looks like, even if it's just preparing to write or jotting mm -hmm. down a note or putting something in your phone yeah. for later. You never know. That's amazing. Yeah. Actually, I was out, just a little thing. I was out in nature. I was in Pinawa, in fact. Uh, uh, and I was walking and, and, and something lately, I've been using my phone to write down notes when I think of things that I want to write. Mm -hmm. And, uh, so I was walking and it was icy and I went to jot down the note and I fell in. Oh, no. <laughs> and yeah, but you know, so yeah, jot down notes, but be careful. <laughs> oh, yeah. stepping, if you're outside in nature, <laughs> combining the two things you love. I hope it was a juicy thought and you're like, that was worth getting. It was wow. worth the fault. It's, in, yeah. it's on my phone. I, I got it in there. I got it recorded so that it didn't slip away and I forget it. <laughs> That's beautiful. Oh, I'm glad you're safe. You break it. No, I'm fine. I'm fine. I've recovered. <laughs> Good. Good. 
that's awesome Thank you, Christine. I love that point about the compass. Like it's, it's, you know, whatever is your compass, like there has to be that one thing that you can, or it might be a group of things that you can come back to each and every time. It's like the thing that grounds you. Right. Yes. And, and Christine and I are really aligned in the, the writing portion there. Mm -hmm. um, I find that mindfulness and mindfulness uh, MBSR practices are like my first rung but that's not like my that isn't the thing that makes me feel grounded it's almost like it's the gateway like I need to do that and then move into my writing in order to be able to sort of find myself in that space of 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 relief and then yeah nature I couldn't I couldn't do without that that, that is is so maybe mindfulness is like the two sides of the ladder and then writing would be the first <laughs> mm -hmm. maybe it's like that right I think the latter the itself is mindfulness but yeah it's what does that look like yeah 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 or it's the base pillar like it's one of the foundational things that always has to be there like the hierarchy of needs right like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah SJ said, um I love that you said your stories about like the footnotes and contacting Pat Lee and you know like <laughs> It's so much about having that intentional support system and intentional people around you that make the difference. Mm -hmm. I love that you said that, that, you know, all these things have to be added together. It's not one simple thing that, you know, that fixes everything. No, no, no. It's a recipe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, look at the baby. Oh, the baby. <laughs> Wonderful. Thanks for that, SJ. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry, I have another guest today. Hello. Oh, you're so cute. Yeah, she, she name is Emilia and she I has mean, one yeah. year. Yeah. So yeah, for me it's burnout. It's so similar things because I couldn't remember when last time I slept well. So yeah, in my case it's <laughs> it's normal things, but sometimes mm -hmm. oh, I it's so hard. Yeah. Yeah, but I I hope that one day I finally could. <laughs> oh, God. my oldest didn't sleep on her own till they were almost nine. Like, I went almost a decade without sleep. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So so I understand you so well in this case. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it looks like you're enjoying it, too. Like, it looks like you're making the most out of it. All your smiles and cuddles and... Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, she's my best best gift, but also she's challenged me sometimes because <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because for me it's really important not to be just mother. I also want to build a strong career here and like journalist, yes. but oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. yes, yeah, because I'm newcomer, so it's because all my life I hear story that's to be a mother it's so it's so easy it's so you have it's so cute you like leprechaun who lived in rainbow it's every day it's something like you know party but <laughs> when it becomes a mother you understand it's not doesn't really work because no. you need and dedicate it all time of uh, your baby and also find your way in the career it's it's really difficult but yeah. you need yeah mm -hmm. and things need to spend so many times but I tried it I tried to find some voluntary job but also uh I noticed that I forget to find one day in the week to relax because I also thinking if I don't did it if I if I couldn't did it since so, so after years I lost it all my change to build some career so yeah so it's you know, it's really helpful for me to think about relax and, you know, slow down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, it's still an myself. Yes, yes. And plus, you know, you're modeling for your child how to healthily pursue goals, right? Like you're showing her how to be discerning. I think we have this conception that we need balance, but balance implies everything's equal. But it's really not about everything being equal. It's about being able to discern and focus where we need to focus and being proactive in the things that we need to. So I think 
you're you're modeling such wonderful skills for her right now and she's seeing a strong example of someone that can be so loving and joyful and a place of sanctuary but also be out in the world taking risks and challenges and it's really admirable mm -hmm. I agree. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for this because for me it's really important to you know prepare her for life and to be you know mental health person. And yeah. I know that maybe sometimes I did something wrong things, but for my missions to when she's growing up and then she go into her psychology, she didn't have so much to, to, yeah. to tell her about her childhood. <laughs> so yeah, I agree with you. Yeah, it's really important yeah. to, to awesome. take good example for her. <laughs> yes, yes. Thank you for sharing, Victoria. Thank you Thank so you, much. <laughs> Thank you, Victoria. Thank, Thank you. you. Wonderful. Thank you for this good meeting. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad you enjoyed. It was great. Thank you for allowing me to share. Lovely. My goofiness. And... <laughs> your, you so your, 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 did you say goofiness or yeah, goofiness? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Goofiness. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Chrissy. Um, uh, I'm, I'm noticing the time. Like I, we could go on with more questions and, and, and lots more conversation. Uh, this has been really valuable and really filling lunchtime conversation. And I'm really very grateful for all of you for being here with us. Uh, and, um, I think now's a good time to sort of wrap everything up. And I just wanted to, just a reminder that we're still here. We're present. And hopefully we can take that into the next moments of our day. This has been a really rich conversation. Um, I'm very grateful to Chrissy for joining us for Mindful Lunch today. It's been really awesome, very filling. And to SJ for the technical coordination behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, SJ. And to all of you for joining me live. Um, for everyone who's going to watch the recording, thank you so much. We're going to share the recording and uh, a few of uh, Chrissy's resources with everyone. She's got a really great tool that we didn't get to uh, going to talking about, but it will be a nice surprise that you'll find in your inbox um, when we're done here. Uh, please join our email list if you're not already a member so we can send you the invitation for next month's Mindful Lunch event. Uh, I'm going to be talking with two newcomer women, two immigrant women. I wouldn't call them newcomers at this point. They've been here for a while, but they're not Canadian born. And we're going to talk about authenticity. Mm -hmm. What does it look like from the immigrant's perspective? So um, that's going to be a really great conversation to, to tap into. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining me. Well, good. Bye.